Okay, we'll get started. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting. The date is Tuesday, November 28, 2017, and I hope everyone had a very nice Thanksgiving. I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded, and please turn off your cell phones. Ellen, would you please do the roll call? Thank you, Mrs. Granato. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? <coughs> Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Present. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? And Chairperson no. Mrs. Granato? Here. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? Present. All present. Okay, thank you. I would like the students from our Silas Dean Middle School to come on up to the front and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Emmett, we have a student recognition tonight also from the Silestine Middle School. We certainly do. If I could have uh, Mr. Hennessy and our crew from the uh, television uh, oh. program that we have at uh, Silestine Middle School, please come up. Um, thank you for having us. Um, we're kind of excited. We're, uh, we have a new program at Silas D. Middle School. Um, last year we had a vision of, of reinventing our electives, or our unified arts program. Um, and this is kind of one of the, the results, um, one of the, 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 I guess, our uh, rewarding moments of seeing some kids collaborate on something and come together on something um, that at the beginning of the year, I didn't know how it was going to go. Um, but our vision was we wanted to create a video production program for the students. And, and more than just students sitting up in front and reading the daily announcements in front of a camera and having it broadcast to the students and calling that television production. Um, we really had a vision of saying, you know what, how can we teach our students and instill some 21st century skills in them at the same time and, and teach them how to tell a visual story? And that's kind of what we went about. We went about telling them, um, teaching them how do they put together a story? How do they tell a visual story? Because I think in the 21st century, that's going to be a vital key, whether you're in marketing, you know, uh, you know, teacher or anything, you're going to have to sell a visual story. And I think it's key. And, and, and the nice thing about us is we were able to kind of create an environment where the students ran the show. Um, I'm just a facilitator. I kind of keep kind of keep kids out of trouble to tell the truth um, and, and kind of let them kind of do it. And it's, it's been great and exciting uh, to see what they have achieved in such a short period of time. Um, currently working on our fourth show. Um, it's called Access Silas Dean. Um, and it's a show that's totally produced by students for students. Um, and, and I look at it more than just a student news program, but a way for us to showcase to the community in the future, a way for us to showcase the community other great things that are going on at Silas Dean um, and kind of bring us together a little bit. Um, now what I'd like to do is the students did put together a video to kind of showcase it. And then I'm gonna give it over the mic over to the, the people that are really important um, and let them kind of talk about th what they, um, see and what they've learned throughout the program. We good to go? Just press the press the space bar. Or? Do you ever wonder how the stories are written and produced for Access Silas Dean? It's a very long and complicated process. First, you have to think of an interesting topic. It is very hard to choose a topic. 
you have to go through the hmm test, which is when you say hmm to a very interesting topic. Then you will write a script. Make sure your script isn't too long or too short, and don't make it boring. And use simple words so the audience understands what your topic is about and what you are talking about also. After writing your script, you have to find a location to film or record your interviews. You have to take many takes of these stories in order to limit mistakes. Then you get the footage onto the computer, and then you start the hardest part, which is the editing process. There's a lot of editing between fixing your mistakes and fixing the sound quality in your segment. Overall, it is a very difficult process, but in the end, when you get to see the final product, it is all worth it. Yeah, I think this class is very beneficial. Um, I learned a lot about iMovie and how to create films that people will enjoy because it gave you a sense of responsibility with the due dates for each show. I also think it was uh, good because it gave you a sense of creativity and freedom to make your own show and share with the whole school. I really get to um, do things like this in other classes and it's a good way to like um, try new things and learn how to uh, make videos that you and other people can enjoy. Hi, I'm Carly Tinker, and a thing we learn in the Lights, Camera, Action class is we learn a lot of responsibility between having to get our shows produced by a certain date and have them by a deadline and getting to roam the hallways freely and having to, um, <laughs> to get our videos done. I'm Emily Sousa. Also in Lights, Camera, Action, you learn to work with people you wouldn't usually work with. Hi, I'm Lainey Ucello, and if it weren't for the class working together and putting in their best effort, then there would be no show to present to the teachers and students each week. I'm Josh Barbara, and really when all this comes together with amazing students, amazing people, um, really it just comes down to you're, you're having a great time and you love what you're doing, and really I wouldn't want to be doing my... Um, job with um, anybody else and honestly there's a lot of fun. Uh, Mr. Hennessy is setting up an advisory class and an after school program for this. Um, there are a certain amount of days for the terms but I always wanted to keep going with this because I love what we're doing in this class and I just really love to keep going with it so I, I'm, I'm going to be joining that class and personally I'm just excited to keep going with it. Great. Um, like I said, I said this, I think the students said it the best. Um, it's a great way for us to bring um, a community of students together, and especially students that don't usually do things together, and partner them up and have them accomplish a common goal, um, and that's putting together a student news program. Um, and, and I'm excited to see the vision of Silas Dean Middle School um, and allowing us to do something like this, and the administration being brave enough to say, you know what, we're going to let a group of students roam the hallways and trust them to behave like young adults and trust, and, and trust them to behave like the way they know they are um, and put together a quality news program. Um, now there's been a lot of questions on how can we see this program and so forth. We are work, currently working on a, on a platform to kind of broadcast these to the public, whether it's a private YouTube channel or something on our blog. We're trying to work that out um, because we do want to keep um, the privacy of the students a little bit. We don't want to just make it an open market for everyone to look at. So we are working on that. So. Um, the public can see these um, at, a low, at a more regular basis. But thank you for having us, um, and we're excited to see what the future, you know, the end of the year has for us. Yes. Thank you for showing us this tonight. We, um, I remember last year in the spring, I think, you and um, your co-teacher, I forgot who the woman's name. Emily Hayward. Brought all this curriculum change to the programs and services, and we were very excited about some of the changes that the two of you are implementing. Um, with very practical skills that the kids would need. So this is um, exciting to see how this finally, how this came out. And I look forward to seeing how some of the other courses that the two of you put into play. I hope to be back soon to talk about our robotics class yeah. and, yes. and, and our build it big and stuff like that. So hopefully um, you'll have me back and I'll have some more students up here to, to talk about all the other things they're learning and, it, and being I, excited about learning too. I think it's also important too because we have such a 
a large program now that this would feed into at the high school with the, mm -hmm. the studio mm -hmm. and with um, the teacher up there. So. And, and, and that was one of our goals, too, is, um, you know, we're not really teaching them how to do TV news. We're teaching them how to tell a digital story, which I think is important because that can play into a lot of different careers and especially play into helping our high school curriculum, our program grow. Um, if they're going up, they're already ready how to, you know, being able to tell a story already. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for having us. Anyone else? John? I want to oh. ask the students, what did you guys think of working with this equipment? Um... It was very new, like I knew what all this stuff was, but I kind of like got a greater sense of like what it was and how it worked. And Mr. Hennessy taught us very well um, with this and how to use the things. And as Carly said, they did give us a lot of responsibility, trusting us with like $2,000 pieces of equipment. So, um, it, uh, it was a lot of fun just to play around with the little gadgets that we have. Nice. That's great. Uh, yeah, I, and I'm going to piggyback on what um, Diane was saying because the TV station in the um, high school has really become quite a production. And we've used it. We just recently used it. Um, and you were saying, Mr. Hennessy, that you let them work. Well, that's what Sue Coco does up at the high school. And I love that reversal of roles where they're learning through asking you to be a facilitator. Great job. Thank you very much. Students do. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on November 14, 2017. Are there any corrections? Do they see any? Okay. May I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Those minutes are approved. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and may I remind you that we give you a five minute limit, except for the Cub Scouts. I'm Barbara Saladin, Six Lantern Lane, and I'm the DIN leader of the Weeblos 2 Cub Scout from PAC 246, and they wanted to share some information with you. Um, our, our DEN is made up of six fifth grade boys from Five from Highcrest, one from Emerson Williams. Ryan, Camden, Colin, Kevin, Ryan, and myself, John. Currently, we are working on the Build a Better World adventure. Part of this adventure includes learning about rights and duties of being a U.S. citizen, which, which includes pr participating in our local community and staying informed of issues affecting our community. We decided to come up with this meet we decided to come to this meeting tonight so we can be active citizens. We wanted we wanted to share something positive with you about our schools. At Highcrest Elementary School, we focused on the character trait gratitude during the month of November. The fifth grade hosted our school-wide morning meeting last week. At the meeting, we spoke about the people, events, and other items we are grateful for. We are thankful for the Chromebooks in our classroom. This technology helps us do assignments that require us to access the internet.
We are grateful for our amazing teachers at High Crest School to help us become better people. We are grateful for Mr. Kabowski's physical education class and the use of the apparatus. The apparatus is like a giant jungle gym or playscape that takes up most of the gym. Mr. Kabowski uses creative ways and fun games to teach us different ways to move and control our bodies and be physically active. We especially appreciate that Mr. Kabowski takes it all down so that we, that we can have our High Crest Fall Festival in the gym. And then he puts it right back up so we, so we don't miss having time using it before it is put away for the rest of the school year. We are thankful for all the parents who volunteer in our classroom in school. This month, Ms. Aglico, a Highcrest parent, helped the fifth grade classes harvest kale, carrots, and radishes from the Highcrest garden. Each student brought in an additional ingredient, then with Mrs. Aglico's help, and the help from our teachers and other parent volunteers, we turned it into a yummy stone soup. We appreciate our parent volunteers and special activities like this. We are grateful for our after school programs. Some of these programs are super athletes, robotics club, cooking classes, running club, and much more. These programs help us learn things we can't always learn in our classrooms. These activities are enjoyable, yet we still learn something every time we attend to the program. For example, in running club, I learned how to run correctly. We all appreciate these after school programs. Good evening, my name is Ryan Kleinerchevik and I'm in fifth grade at Emerson Williams. I am grateful for the books that our teachers read to us each month. It is, it is fun that we, are, that we then are able to do a project that goes along with the book with our buddies. For example, we listened to crack, qu Quackers and then made a duck slash cat puppet. Quackers is a cat that thinks he's a duck. The message was be yourself. Lastly, we want to thank the Board of Education members for donating their time to improve the schools of Weathersfield. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Scouts, you were great. And before the meeting, I met with you because I was asked if, to do an interview. Your questions were excellent. Keep up the good work. Nice job. Is there anyone else wishing to make a public statement? Okay. Mr. Emmett, you have some communication to share? I do. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. At our most recent board meeting, uh, the Board of Education approved the reduction of the board's operating budget by $467,443. On November 17th, Governor Malloy uh, addressed $91 million in unassigned savings from the bipartisan budget that was just passed. The governor's solution was to further reduce the ECS funding to municipalities across the state. As a result, for Weathersfield, this cut is $867,674. This is in addition to the reduction that we just absorbed. At this time, it's not clear if the General Assembly is going to reconvene to address the actions taken by the governor. It is certainly prudent at this time for the board and town leadership to come together to discuss on working on a solution. Um, we are presently working on updating our reduction scenarios. Um, please remember that within our reduction scenario, some of that reduction scenario was applied to the reduction of $467,433. So the administrative team will be meeting tomorrow for further discussion as well. So this is uh, an item that we're going to need to come back to. We had hoped we had finished it, but hence that is not the case. The roofing project at Stillman is moving forward at a good pace. The slate has been stripped from the southwest and north sides of the building. Rotten roof sheathing has been removed and replaced. I'm very happy to report that the hole in the western side of the roof is now uh, patched, which has been great. Waterproof membrane has been installed over the sheathing in preparation for new slate. Um, as expected, this project has greatly limited, uh, limited parking at Stillman. And for all of us who work in the Stillman building, we are adjusting to the noise uh, that a project such as this brings. Uh, we expect that this project will be finished uh, in the next month, a month and a half. 
I'd like to take this opportunity again to congratulate Ms. Charlene Maddock, uh, Weathersfield's Teacher of the Year for 2017-2018. Charlene, along with fellow Teachers of the Year from across the state, uh, were honored in an event uh, held at the Bushnell on November 15th. And I also want to report fall sports have now officially come to the, a close and winter sports schedules are gearing up. We start off with scrimmages for many of our sports teams next week. Um, it is also important to remember that we are entering the holiday concert season. Uh, your calendars will fill up very quickly. So please check those Friday updates um, for materials related to those events. Thank you, Mrs. Grudow. Okay, thank you. Anyone with a question? Okay. So we'll move on to our action items. Um, under our action items tonight, Ginger, would you please read motion 6A for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education cancel their regularly scheduled meeting of Tuesday, December 26th, 2017. Okay. Is there a second for this second. motion? Thank you. Any discussion? This is kind of a traditional day that we cancel. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. Thank you. And motion 6B, Elaine, would you read it for us? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a child rearing leave of absence for ID 905434 under the provision of Article 5.6 of the current agreement between the Weathersfield Board of Education and the Weathersfield Federation of Teachers. This request is for the leave beginning on or about February 20th, 2018 and continuing through the 2017-2018 school year. This requested leave will follow the 12-week FMLA period. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, um, any discussion on this? Michael, do you have any details to yeah, add to it? This is, uh, these typically come through to us. Um, these are contained within the uh, WFT contract. Uh, actually, in this particular case, uh, this teacher has uh, gone out now and is currently out and has uh, given birth. So uh, this is one that we would support. We have a certified teacher in as a long-term sub currently, and we would support this. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. And Diane, would you read motion 6C for us, please? Move that the Weathersfield Board of Education establish a wellness subcommittee at the board level. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on this? Yes. Elaine? Can you please describe what a um, wellness subcommittee would be? In terms of what it would cover? No, I, I know we have a wellness committee made of, of some, the head of the special ed department and certain administrators, mm -hmm. but what does this mean for um, what, a creation of a subcommittee of that committee, I'm assuming? Yes, this would, right? be, this would be a subcommittee of the Board of Education. Uh, and the focus of this committee would to be to look at a variety of different issues that face the district today, including the opioid issue, okay. bullying, nutrition, mm -hmm. the wellness policy that is contained within board policy, which we need to update, uh, <laughs> student <laughs> discipline, vaping. safety, security, vaping, which is an issue at the high school right now that we've already talked about at PTSA. The list is long. And having this at the board level, what will happen is the district level will answer to the board level okay. and will come in and provide us with, with updates. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mike. Okay. Anyone else? Well, we had talked about this earlier, and I had mentioned the fact that in order for students to learn, they have to be emotionally there. And when you have so many of the social issues today with bullying and um, gender issues and home issues, these children, students come to school, um, and we need to be aware of um, taking care of them through wellness. So if there's no other discussion, can we have a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6C passes. And motion 6D, Chris, would you read it for us? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, recommended motion. Mo move that the Weathersfield Board of Education contribute $1,000 to the 2018 Weathersfield High School Safe Graduation Party. 
Okay. Can I have a second to that? Second. second. Okay. Yeah. And if I may, um, Madam Chair, the Weathersfield High School uh, Safe Graduation Program began in 1986 as a Weathersfield Junior Women's Club project, and there's been over 95% student attendance at this event for the past 30 years. Uh, the Board of Education has traditionally made a contribution to this activity, which is budgeted annually. I might add just um, the one great thing I've noticed about this um, event is how many merchants around town have a cup out and, and there's an active part of the community to help encourage people to donate to this uh, really great project. I know I have, I've, I've been, you can't go down Silas Dean without hitting, seeing it everywhere. So, I, yeah, no, but is that what I went to, the sweatshirt? Oh, well, that's even better. <laughs> Got something to trade. But again, I think uh, more than appropriate, and obviously it's been done by boards before, and it's a great uh, tradition, I think, is it's probably graduated to that. Right. Diane? Um, thank you for this donation. As some of you remember, uh, two years ago, I was chairman of the SAFE graduation, and I'm co-chair again this year. So if anyone wants to buy a Weathersfield mug, <laughs> T-shirt, or a keychain, We'll be at Holidays on Main and Emerson Williams over the coming weeks. You know, Kevin's your competition on the mugs. That's the problem. Oh, I know. Yeah, he's he's <laughs> killing it on the mugs. Nice, <laughs> um, th this is an important program for people who don't realize it in the community. Um, each year, the parents of the senior class have to raise between fifty and $60,000 to put on this event. And um, some of you have been at the community center when it's been transformed. Um, and we do have 95%, if not 100% of the, the graduating class attends. So we will be holding a dance, which is our major fundraiser in March, late March. And as Chris said, um, a lot of the businesses and community organizations in town step up during the course of the year, every year, and donate substantially either funds or food or prizes and so forth. So it truly is a community effort. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 60 passes. At tonight's meeting, we have our first reading of the proposed 2018-2019 and the 2019-2020 school year calendar. Um, are there any comments? Michael? I, yeah, I could speak to it if you don't mind. Uh, this know. is a process that uh, we go through every couple of years. Um, we have aligned this calendar uh, to be consistent with the correct calendar. Um, we do have the flexibility to change that. Uh, where it was etched in stone at one point in time, there is flexibility with it. But obviously, it tends to make sense where, where those holidays are. Um, this was a committee that was co uh, containing multiple uh, bargaining units, so this was not something that was done in isolation. We had the input of the uh, WFT, the administrators union, secretaries and paraprofessionals as well. Um, so we've looked at this over the course of two years. We like going out two years. We typically did not do that in the past, but the going out two years is certainly helpful for parents and it's helpful for us with regard to, uh, to the planning process. So. Um, one of the things that's always interesting, everybody wonders about um, April vacation. I just happened to get an uh, email this week from a colleague over in Southington asking about when uh, vacation was in April of 2018. So from what I've gotten back already, um, Canton, Simsbury, West Hartford, Rocky Hill, and South Windsor are all the same week we would be. I see only Region 10 going the week after us, encompassing Good Friday. So. I think the um, calendar obviously is, it's logically based, um, certainly with the professional development, that's a mandate that we have to provide. Those PD days are in there. And also you'll notice there are a couple of uh, early dismissal days, minimum school days around holidays. Uh, those are contractual, so we keep those in as part of the WFT contract. So if you have any further questions about the calendar or any further input, um, please get that to me. Um, and then we'll put this on for uh, approval at the uh, December 12th board meeting. Okay. Anyone else with comments? No. Okay. Yeah, I like the fact that we had a lot of emergency days and they get out early if we don't have snow. Yes. Those are nice <laughs> early dates. Okay. Um, moving on to meetings that have been held. We had the Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Um, I attended um, both the um, annual meeting 
which they had on October 23rd, and, it, and it, it was quite a success. It was well received with excellent speakers and a parent panel um, that spoke of moving to Wethersfield for the educational opportunities for their children. And then at the November 13th meeting, the group discussed the success of um, opening the grant-funded Family Learning Center. This program is proving to be an immediate success in working with parents and children, and please check out their website um, to learn more about this program and other services available. Kim Bobbin continues to work her magic as she connects new families to the resources that are available for them. And as we've always said on the board, a strong foundation helps to create strong schools. Um, finance and information. Wait, wait, I have a oh, Go ahead. I have a question on the um, Wethersfield Early Childhood Collaborative. Um, I have a number of nephews entering kindergarten, and my question is on that tr kindergarten transition paperwork. And it says there was a discussion mm -hmm. around the paperwork preschools in town, I guess, like uh, First Church, send to the kindergarten teachers. Is this helpful to the kindergarten teachers? Can anybody answer that? Sally, is that what they get from the, the kindergarten? Yeah, Sally, they, there was um, quite a bit of talk about that. I, I, I wonder if, you know, if my kid were in first church and there was paperwork sent and I know there was when they were but I mean there was little little probably today there's much more I don't know is this helpful to the kindergarten teachers yeah so those are the minutes from the meeting uh, those were kind of a brainstorming discussion minutes so I don't have the exact answer right now but I can tell you a little bit about the process um, and our uh, incoming kindergarten registration process um, while we have do it all online uh, we do try to um, gather as much information about our incoming kindergarten. So we have a survey that the parents fill out. We have a survey that the uh, preschool providers or daycare provider would fill out also. Um, we also invite them in for a story time so we can collect some observational data, primarily to help um, create some class sizes that are balanced in uh, different areas. Um, because we don't know our incoming kindergarten students. Um, anecdotal evidence I've heard from um, kindergarten teachers over the years is they are helpful. Sometimes they don't take all the information before the first day of school and memorize all of it because um, they want to get to know their students in front of them and um, get to know who they are. But then they will reference them to find out more information as the year goes on. So they're used early by a team of people to create um, balanced kindergarten classes. Um, but again, we have registrations that happen all summer. Um, if I can get one um, kind of public service announcement out there, the sooner you can register for kindergarten, the uh, more helpful it is to the district and teachers and planning and getting that information in. Um, so sometimes we don't get those forms in for um, some of our students um, as, a year, uh, as the summer goes on and the registration process continues. And so we don't have that information. Um, so yes, they do have it on hand, and they do find it um, help, helpful to refer back to and to look at when placing um, students into classes. So um, if my child went to, let's just say, first church, and the teacher did a write-up on child, my child X, um, it's not automatically sent to the kindergarten teacher. The parent gets it. The parent's choice is to bring it to you and put it in the file. Is that how it goes? Or do they automatically send these things on to the kindergarten teachers if they're... So there's a release form. So uh, because of FERPA, uh, preschool teachers can't give us information directly. So there's a release information on the top. Um, we provide mailings. Uh, my office provides mailings to all the preschool providers that we're aware of in town. Um, it's part of the registration pack and a link on, for the parents. But yes, there um, we have a lot of students at, a pre at preschool outside of Weathersfield that yeah. don't get a mailing from me. Um, so yes, parents have to sign off that they give them permission. We ask the preschool provider to send it directly to the school, um, but the parent is involved in that process. They have to be. So when they come to register their kindergarten, someone at the kindergarten registration says, did your child go to a, um, a preschool and here's a, could you send us any information and would you sign this paper? It's, Correct. I mean, they yep. have to be, somebody has to prompt them. They wouldn't Correct. know that, that that's Yep, so they have a link, but also during um, the orientation meeting with parents, they, there's copies available. During story time, there's questions, most definitely, yep. Okay, that's just, I just wanted a clarification to see how that, got to us yeah you know because I think it's probably some valuable information although there's so little I don't know <laughs> thank you yeah thank you yeah, Sally. A quick question though Chris oh yeah uh, a quick question um, 
you mentioned this information that comes forward so that you can create a balanced class. Mm -hmm. uh, two, two questions to that. Uh, there are some comments that you can't collect that, obviously, unless the parent signs a release form, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so what's the rate of parents not, I mean, not signing the police, a release form, excuse me? Um, so I am not aware, and again, uh, of any parents refusing to, to not have that information shared. I think just more of, um, you know, registration to public education. Um, sometimes I joke is uh, longer than registering, buying a car. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of information because uh, we want to be able to have a lot of background on the students, and we also report some of that information to the state as required. Um, so it's a it's a big process. So the state requires that information from you. Not this information. This is what we do to help transition students into and, our schools. And um, again, forgive me for being a little ignorant yeah. of this, but if you have this file on the child that you're using to create a balanced uh, population in the schools, I get that. Where does this file? Where does this information go after the child has entered kindergarten and moving up the ranks? Is is this a complete file through their entire education career and in Wethersfield, is that how it works? Um, it's part of the registration packet. Um, so uh, if I go back to kind of your original question, I have not heard of anybody anecdotally refusing, but there are quite a few we don't get in just because of the process or parents choosing not no, to. No, no, I, I, I don't think that was clear. I meant to say the information that you collect yep. as part of the registration process for that particular student who goes to kindergarten and then may stay in the system or may move out of the system yeah where does that information where is that information housed and how is it used in the future if at all uh, I it mean? would be housed in their student folder um, and it wouldn't be used in the future um, a kindergarten teacher may reference it a, a month into school yeah, I get um, that. kind of you know how was the student performing in preschool are they seem very anxious they seem very nervous were they right. comfortable do they have a close friend? Or, you know, there might be some information that would be helpful for the teacher to make some connections. Oh, absolutely. I'm, yeah. I'm just curious about how all the, the, the paperwork on this, where does it go, and is it part yeah. of, like, the ongoing It would stay in their student cumulative file. Student as they progress? Okay. Yep. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Sally. Okay. We'll move on to Finance and Information Management Committee. And I do believe Polly read this to us last time we were here, I think, because we just had the meeting and then she gave us the minutes, but it's also in your packet, okay? Um, school Projects and Building Committee, Mr. Emmett? The uh, School Projects Building Committee met on the 8th of November. Uh, that was the night of the Superintendent's Award Ceremony. Fred uh, attended on my behalf. Uh, there were several uh, purchase orders that uh, needed to go through. Again, we're still waiting for the final word from town council on the approval of the last batch of technology. Uh, Keith did go back to the uh, company and got uh, a new quote. Uh, the quote is about $12,600 less than what the original quote was. These machines now have been out. There's enough of a uh, supply of them where that has come down. We've had this happen a couple times before where the uh, number has gone down, but then we're not getting the action and getting it approved, so we have to hold off. So uh, town council still has that. It has been tabled. We're hopeful that we can get that um, squared away. Uh, the other piece under the school uh, projects building committee, Fred reported to me today that uh, we've had five motors burn out already in the uh, HVAC system over at that high school. Um, so mm -hmm. this is certainly a concern. So Fred's gonna be reaching out to Carrier um, to find out if there's something we can do. Five motors in the span of two years, uh, to me, is uh, a few too many. So a uh, meeting that was scheduled for the 27th uh, yesterday did not happen. The next scheduled meeting uh, of the building committee, I understand, to be on the 11th of December. And Carrier is the person that makes this particular motor. Is that a They make the okay. unit. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Diane? Diane? Um, are we just on punch list now on that project? Yes, punch list is largely finished, and now they're doing all of the commissioning. So we're, okay. we're largely finished with this project. Okay. Um, also, do you know, um, or maybe Matt knows, what are, what's the outstanding amount that the state owes us for reimbursement on this? Are, are we, that's the town would know that? The town would know that. I can look at that up. I can get that for you. Okay. Because there was something today in the um, Connecticut Mirror about 
the state um, in some financial difficulty regarding the capital fund, which is the reimbursement to the schools and the mm -hmm. school grants. Um, before the, I think the bond commission was meeting today, wasn't it? I or believe tomorrow. it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Um, but I was just curious if, it's, if there still is money mm -hmm. out there and how much it is and if this will impact any of our reimbursement or slow it down. Okay. Anyone else? Comments? Okay. And the CREC Council met on November 15th. Um, the council is the Capital Region Education Council, which Weathersfield is a member along with 35 other surrounding towns. Um, CREC is implementing a tuition for their pre-K. Um, it's going to be based on need. The area CREC high schools now have a student senate that works as an advisory group for CREC, and they just recently opened a relief center for our Caribbean friends on Van Dyke Avenue in Hartford, and information is on their website on how people can help the center or utilize the center. Um, legal counsel, which is probably the most interesting part of all of CREC, is, um, works to communicate info to and from the state assembly, and they spoke of the following, finally a state budget. Um, there's a loss of state stipends for teacher mentors, which is a state mandate, so that's now known as an unfunded state mandate. No teacher retirement funding expected from the towns. Um, a task force has been set up to review school funding, um, and it must be reported by April 1st, 2018, and a special education task force to convene and have a report by April 1st, 2019. Um, and work will convene at some point for guidelines for expelled students and obtaining a diverse staff. So Polly is going to be our new CREC representative starting in January. Um, okay, we'll move on to meeting schedule. This is kind of the calm before the storm, everyone. Um, we don't have any meetings scheduled right now. We do have committees set up, and we have chairpersons for each of those committees. Um, is there any unfinished business? Okay. So anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And re may I remind you that you have a five-minute limit. You want to come up again? <laughs> Okay, are there any board comments? John? Thank you, Bobby. Um, I had just a couple of questions. Number one, in today's Hartford Current, there was an article regarding magnet schools and enrollment is down. Mm -hmm. um, do, do we get notice on that? Do we have a handle on that and how our town magnet school is doing as far as their enrollment? Are they at capacity? And, um, if they start closing these magnet schools, what happens to that building? Does it become property of the town? Is that something that we can look into? I mean, it might, not, might be a good Christmas present, but, <laughs> but it's just something to think about, especially if you know, we're looking at different things at facilities and maintenance, and that's one of the things that we'll be looking at as well as our plan to move forward on our schools. So I thought that would be good information for us to have at that committee level. Um, attended the library reception. It was a well done uh, reception. Wanted to thank the library for their generosity and their um, hospitality. Uh, the other thing uh, are the gym floors in our schools. They look fantastic. Mm -hmm. They really, really do. And, um, you know, I know that was a, a lot of work uh, on the school to have that. Um, you know, thing happened while things were going on, but yet, uh, you know, it was good to have Fred Bushy there to help us uh, get that completed in, at their cost. So I think that was a great thing. Um, the uh, punch list that you mentioned regarding the renovation, do, are we happy with the punch list being completed or are we just um, looking at it? Because I hope it's not, uh, what's our warranty once the punch list is completed and we already have burners burning out? Do we um, have that 
ready to go if something else should happen once we're out of warranty or in warranty or anything like that. Well, kind. What, what we're seeing at this point in time, John, is that this project has finished up and we're out of warranty in many areas. Um, you know, one of the things that we've faced here is um, with the issue of the HVAC. Um, the original design was to do the geothermal. It was value engineered out and we, it was redesigned. And um, we now have these monstrous units and uh, you know, Fred has talked about air handling unit number three, and air handling unit number three has never really worked properly since it's gone in. And we've had multiple uh, times where the vendor has come out, where the manufacturer has come out. We've dealt with software issues. We've dealt with hardware issues. Obviously, I mentioned the motors. You know, Fred is working on a fix to these motors to try and get them to the point where they don't burn out. But he expresses, obviously, the frustration, you know, and... The, they don't make them like they used to. When he <laughs> talks about, you know, he's replaced motors back in the late 70s, early 80s, and they're still working fine. And then we're going through these like, you know, like crazy. And, you know, the replacement of these, it's not an easy task. It's a, you know, it's likely going to be a crane pick to get up and get these things replaced. So, and that now that they're out of warranty, although he's going to try, that falls upon the Board of Ed to, to fix. So, you know, that's one of the factors that we're, we're dealing with here. Um, I, you know, the building is certainly getting full use. Uh, those of you that were at the superintendent's award ceremony, you saw that building was absolutely packed. We had all kinds of different adult ed to yoga, to youth basketball, to the barracudas in the, uh, in the pool, to a big crowd in the auditorium. So that building is used constantly, and actually all of our buildings are. So, um, you know, again, we, we have those areas that continue to be little itchy things. You know. Uh, one of the new lights in the pool, uh, bar number three, I call it. It's, been, it's out again, second time it's gone out. And we fixed it once and we've got to fix it again. So those are the itchy items that we continue to go through here. And I think we're gonna be dealing with them. Remember, Fred, in last year's budget, one of the things Fred had asked for was a, an HVAC mechanic specifically for, for the high school. And it didn't make it into the budget and likely won't this year either. But mm -hmm. um, it is a big building, it's being used constantly and it's, you know, some areas of it are completely fine, but I would say if there's one frustration, I think Tom could attest to it as well sitting in the audience tonight, it's the HVAC system. It's, it's, it has not performed to what our expectations are. And Fred's been after this for several years. Okay. Okay, well, it's uh, to be continued, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, the other thing is I did have the opportunity to go to the superintendent's uh, awards assembly. Well done. I think that there was a lot of uh, uh, excitement and, uh, you know, participation, so it was a great job. And regarding the uh, facilities and maintenance committee, if those people on the committee can give me your schedule, I'd like to get a meeting together before the end of the year uh, when you're not gonna be here so you can get an update of what's going on because um, I'm the only one that was on the committee last time. So everyone's new. Oh, oh, oh. The yeah, everyone's new on the committee. Oh. So we can get an update, overview of where we are. Uh, Bobby will be there, I hope. Mm -hmm. So she can uh, also be part of the group. So just tell me when you're not available so we can get a date and we can share that with Fred and Mike so we can get that meeting going. It's very important to keep the momentum on this yep. going on. I agree. And uh, one other thing I forgot to do is, you know, we did have an election and we're, those of us that were elected, you know, congratulations. But one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, it's a volunteer position. And there were uh, five individuals that were not elected. And I just want to thank those individuals for stepping forward and volunteering to put themselves out there uh, to be a candidate. And um, you know, I, I welcome anyone else that would like to try to do that. Maybe someday the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts would like to do it. Oh. I'm sure there's some candidates there that would like to be a part of it. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's a really a important part to be involved in your community. And those individuals uh, that were not elected uh, also deserve a round of thanks for participating and being a part of the campaign. So, great job. Great. Thank you. Anyone else for comments? Ginger? Um, I just wanted to say that I would have very much enjoyed going around. <laughs> we've done some little tours of uh, the elementary schools, and we've been uh, with Bobby and with Kevin to um, Charles Wright and Webb 
and Highcrest and Emerson Williams. And it's so wonderful to see all the technology that's being used mm -hmm. and the way both the students and the um, teachers are wholeheartedly embracing it and having a good time and learning and some of them not even picking their head ups when three strange grown-ups walk in the room because they're so caught up in what they're doing. It's just, it's really nice to see. Thanks, Ginger. It is. It, 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 they were great tours, and um, we also went to the middle school. Did you mention the middle I, school? Yeah, I didn't make it to that, that one. The energy level there is phenomenal now, and you can feel it as you walk in, and um, we saw a little bit of an example of that tonight as to why it's changed for the better. That has been enjoyable. To be continued. To be continued, yeah. Anyone else? Um, I'd just like to make a closing comment, quite similar to comments we made a few months ago about this budget. Um, the board, the administration, the town have worked diligently to make it harmless to our students as the state's reduction in ECS monies. We already absorbed a $467,000 cut when the General Assembly finally passed a budget. And most recently, as Michael Emmett stated, the governor has cut $867,674 from Weathersfield in an attempt to continue to balance the state budget. We continue not to panic. Um, I was most pleased that Mayor Amy Bello called me immediately after the latest um, ECS cut and told me that we would be working together, Town Council, Board of Ed, and the administrative leaders of both to create a solution knowing that the school system could not handle this alone, this cut alone. We will be meeting and cooperating to achieve that goal, and I'm very pleased to be able to say that. Okay, so let's move on to Justin and his comments on life at the high school. Thank you. Six, six students of the trimester in different subject areas were honored today. The fall sports season ended with the WHS football team winning the official sportsmanship award for Northern Connecticut. In addition, four other WHS coaches were honored at the CCC banquet for winning their respective divisions. That includes girls swim, girls cross country, girls soccer, and boys soccer. Wow. Unified basketball and all other winter sports began today. And finally, auditions for the winter musical Fiddler on the Roof will take place at the end of the month. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Justin. Any other comments? Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you and good night.